I'm Don. And hi, I'm Cindy. Welcome to Pearls of Liberty, September 2nd, in the year of the end of the world, <laughs> as some people like to call it, rather whether they're joking or whether they're serious, 2012. It's and, not the end uh, of the world, it's just the end of the illusion that everything is okay. That's right, the end of the illusion. And uh, we're glad that you decided to watch our video this week. And uh, of course, we have given some thought and some discussion to the Republican convention. And Not a whole lot. <laughs> No, we didn't watch it on TV. We listened to three YouTube videos, right? <laughs> yeah. So we're experts. So Don will share his expert opinion. <laughs> yeah, we, we're not like emotionally invested in the Republican Party anymore. So we didn't watch it on TV or anything. And <clears throat> we don't, we were mainly following the, the Ron Paul connection and or lack thereof and how he was just seriously blackballed in, at every turn by the the people controlling the party and the people controlling the media etc even to the point of I would say outright disgrace when some TSA people and, and 40 miles away getting on a plane to leave the area private plane the TSA tells them that hey, they think he might be trying to bomb Romney and they need to search him and uh, and, and his wife and it's just it's just disgraceful that this stuff is happening in America this is a man at the end of his political career a man that's stood for constitution and liberty uh, all, all the time that he's been in Congress and uh, is not given the chance to speak at the floor because he would not unqualified given an un unqualified endorsement to Romney he probably would have given a qualified endorsement and that probably would have counted for something but uh, he, he was not allowed to speak. Uh, he preferred to be blackballed rather than to be censored. And I have to say that's a good call because that wakes people up. When, you, when, when people see the kind of treatment a man like gets, this gets, that really helps them realize what's happening. And a lot of people have been emotionally invested in the Republican Party, especially people like us who are Christians and who were attracted by the pro-life stance of the Republican Party. We were led with this carrot before our face that was always dangling there and we could never get to it, it never happened. And I think a lot of people, us, us at least, have realized that this was never meant to happen. We were never supposed to get Roe v. Wade overturned. We are never really supposed to get uh, a, a solid true, compassionate Christian in there, and I'm not slighting George W. Bush, but I'm exposing him. He wasn't that. He was something else. So there's been a lot of deceptions operating. The, the deception has been easier and easier to see, and I, I think at this point people have choices to make because there it's been really the end of the line here for trying to change politics in America through the Republican Party. It's its uh, not possible anymore, and it's really blatantly obvious. Many people knew it wasn't possible a long time ago, but now it should be obvious to many people. So I think we have a few different choices there. And the choices being, you can continue in the illusion of thinking that you're going to change uh, the party from the inside, yet even as the puppet masters control it, and it continues to take anti-constitutional and anti-biblical stances against the, the things like, I forget what the latest one was th this week, there was something new that, that I hadn't even heard about before, but the, the whole NDAA thing, and it's, it's amazing to me, Republicans that don't even know about that. It's just because the mainstream media has kept quiet about it. If you don't get news from the internet, you don't know what what has been sold out, what, how you've been sold down the river. and So you've got the choice of you can continue with your blinders on and pretend as if the opportunity for returning America to its founding principles is associated in any way with the Republican Party, or you can take a little wider stance and say, I think maybe Libertarian Party politics might work out here and vote third party and get involved third party in whatever way. I'm 
I think that that's probably a, a more valid choice. Even then, your, your opportunity, your potential for impact is, is marginalized because you're going to be on the fringes. Uh, but the, the stance that I'm taking is that I've got to be true to my heart. I've got to be the stand individually for the things that I believe in, in terms of biblical principles and principles of liberty according to the Constitution and the, the founding documents of this country, especially the Declaration of Independence. So, to me, that means I'm going to look for alternatives. And I am not planning on getting out of the country, but I'm not ruling that out either. I, it makes me very sad to think about that possibility. Our hopes are still tied to this land and making an impact here. Um, but whether or not the tables can be turned depend a lot on some of the things that are happening in the, the arenas that are beyond our immediate control as grassroots people and in involvement in politics. There, there is a global power play going on. We've talked about it in previous weeks. There are some very encouraging signs, and yet it's dangerous to get yourself uh, motivated by hope that you can't control because it just, it's just this roller coaster ride. So we think we need a plan to be able to move forward in a way that is true to our principles and true to our desire to help the world. We found a way to do that, it, at least it looks like that for now. Whether or not this uh, big power shift happens in terms of the global banking situation, whether or not that happens, we're finding a way. And that's our prayer for you, that, that everybody would find a way to help make the world a better place. and not get so locked into this battle, this dualism. Uh, I think that a lot of the times that's just a, a sucker's play and then we're just generating this um, momentum for the system to leapfrog into another state of greater police control, greater surveillance, etc. because you operate on the left versus right and then the, the, the side that you're reacting against has the justification to for greater control, etc., and that just leapfrogs into greater tyranny. Uh, the more I'm, even though I'm a Christian, I'm attracted to the idea of the middle way of the Buddhists who see the um, the struggle, the power struggle going on as being a false one. And that doesn't mean that all power struggles are false, but that there is a real power that's sitting above that's playing, playing people off against each other. And that's what we need to be able to see, and that's what we need to be able to expose. So truth exposes lies. Um, yes, truth is greater than lies. And so we're, that's what we're about, is we're about exposing the truth. And we believe that the more people that know the truth, the more free we will be as a people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's a big part of the Christian walk, is being about truth. and we want to help increase that in this country and in the world. And it's, uh, it's sad what's happening now, but it's always darkest before the dawn. There can be a turning, and we want to be a part of that turning towards the light. Absolutely. And if you, if you do happen to uh, still be committed to the Republican Party, you might want to think about that a little. We will uh, include in our comments on YouTube and also on our Pearls of Liberty website, uh, the video, one of the videos to which we were referring, and it's the one uh, where delegates were making an effort to cast their votes for Ron Paul according to what their state had sent them there to do, and they, they were, although they were permitted to say that the votes were cast for Ron Paul, there was no tally of votes for Ron Paul. The whole thing was really swept under the carpet. The Republicans did not follow their own rules that they had made. For there was the even a point where the total votes for Ron Paul would normally have been announced. In other words, there would have been a statement, so many votes for Governor Romney, so many votes for Congressman Paul. That announcement was not made because there would have been so many, and this is my opinion now, but I think it's relatively obvious, there would have such a, been a, a groundswell of cheers and loud vocal affirmation for 
the vote count for Ron Paul, it would have been a historic moment that would have been captured on film forever at this national convention and could have been used in the future. That was not allowed because it was recognized what a, what a watershed moment that would have been. It's sad, really. It, it, I was really struck by that because I used to, from the time, I, I voted for Jimmy Carter, I was raised Democrat, and uh, after that I got caught in the conservative Christian right stream. I think we both have a similar, Republican. similar track because of, with Ronald Reagan and the stance of the Republican Party for being pro-life, we, we didn't know each other, but we, like many people, shifted at that point. Yeah, and as you said, um, they dangled that pro-life, they dangled that, you know, we'll reverse Roe v. Wade like a carrot in front of the Republicans, in front of the Christians to get us to vote Republican. Because as Don has mentioned in the past, historically, Christians have tended to be liberals or Democrats because of the social implications for people that Christians have historically tended to want things that are that tend to be the best for the largest number of people and although it's not that way now at one time the Democratic Party kind of maybe that was a carrot too I don't know but the Republicans crafted a way to court the Christian vote and that way was the abortion issue and we were promised for years. I mean, the Republicans used to have it be a platform uh, of the for the elections that they were going to get Roe v. Wade reversed, and uh, failing that, that uh, they would make a way for states' rights so that states could individually. Uh, create laws that would prohibit abortion. And then there's the whole Supreme Court uh, appointee argument about how conservatives will appoint constitutional low affirming judges. All look no further than the recent debacle with Chief Justice Roberts flipping to the other side and choosing to say Obamacare or the national health care stuff is constitutional because it's a tax, whatever. It, these guys are bought and paid for. There really is no valid argument that can be made for principle in American politics anymore. I'm sorry to have to say that, but that's the, that's the truth as it is playing out in reality right now. And we need to face up to that. We can't just um, continue to look through rose-colored glasses and see the world the way we want it to be. It's becoming very clear that You've got Goldman Sachs A and Goldman Sachs B running this country, and we need to find a way out. Absolutely, and and when you when you decide uh, who to vote for, and, and this you know re referring to the way out, um, and I'm sure Don will have more to say about about the you know write in and so forth. But when when you make a decision uh, to compromise as we, as the Christian right, did many times. Uh, in fact, in 2008, one of, the, one of the key factors in us waking up, along with the banker bailout, was the fact that there wasn't a Republican candidate that even uh, ostensibly met the requirements that the Christian right would have wanted to see. So we've been, we were trained as Christians to compromise gradually over time. They, they lured us in with the promise of reversing R.V. Wade. They uh, got us to vote for their guy on false promises. And gradually they stopped even giving us false promises. And uh, now, you know, Paul Ryan, pro-life, whatever. I mean, he's not even a presidential candidate. He's a vice presidential candidate. And they're not even making those promises anymore. So if we vote for Romney uh, as a fallback, you know, the lesser of two evils, once we begin that process of compromise, it's very difficult to get back on the road of making a decision based on what you really believe is, is right. Mm -hmm. And you want to say something about writing in? And 
the most That's valuable right. vote you can make in American politics today, I strongly believe, is a vote of conscience. The most valuable and commodity that, that needs to be restored to the place of preeminence is the American conscience. And you, as a voter, need to find the way to exercise your conscience. So you could vote Libertarian Gary Johnson. You could decide, and I'm not saying that there might not be valid reasons for this, that you, you could decide that Obama is going to be so dangerous that in his second term that you, you've got to vote Mitt Romney. And I know that, that people have that belief, and I'm not going to say no to that, but I, I can't do it. I, I'm not going to go there because that to me is a lesser of two evils, and I'm totally out of the lesser of two evil games. So the alternatives outside of that are the write-in for Ron Paul if it's possible in your state, in our state in California it is, and uh, I think maybe Cindy can post a map of that, that chart that shows what type of writing candidates are, are possible in diff different states. Or libertarian candidate on the ballot in all 50 states is Gary Johnson. I think that that's always, uh, that's, that's going to be a vote that is not a wasted vote. I, I really hate the argument that this is, that you're wasting your vote if you don't want vote for one of the two candidates in this meaningless horse race because their policies really are virtually identical. Um, people like to make arguments that things like uh, that the, the, the shift in power is going to exacerbate the economic woes if you vote for Romney, that things are going to get even worse because even if their team does good, it'll take them too long to get in there. No, no, no. These guys, these guys are in the revolving door of the Goldman Sachs world of politics and and uh, banking or securities, and that's not going to be what happens. If if austerity comes and it's really tough, that is, I think, a something that would happen in in both environments. Both if Obama were to continue as president, and if Romney were to to come in, I don't take that threat of austerity as being something that the Democrats can compassionately overcome because the the whole idea, the whole, more than an idea, the whole framework of what politicians can really do is dependent on the banking resources available and that's totally controlled at the top and all that's really happening as matters get worse is a power struggle playing one side off against each other to increase centralized control and that's the game that the, these guys on both sides play so I'm saying just say no to this stupid game I like that checkbox that I saw on Facebook where it said you know there's three choices I'm a Republican I'm a Democrat or I'm not playing your silly games anymore and that's that's where I'm at <laughs> Well, I wasn't even going to vote this this fall, um, except that there is because we're in California, Proposition Thirty Seven, which uh, re would require labeling of GMO foods is on our ballot, and I definitely want to register my preference that I I want GMO foods to be labeled, and uh, one of the great disillusionments of one of our friends. Uh, who lives nearby, who has remained quite, well, somewhat reasonable, somewhat uh, faithful to the Republican Party. She attended a Republican affair where uh, they were discussing the, the voter preferences that Republicans should have, and they were told that as loyal Republicans, they should vote against Proposition 37. So, uh, because we want to, we want to empower these corporations that are so good for us, <laughs> that have our best interest at heart, and because we, we the Republicans, uh, want the corporations to be in power to make the economy better. Is that sort of how it works? Uh, I'm not buying it. <laughs> Another, ju just a small point, and the elections are a little ways off, but something to think about. We read that uh, it's it's suggested uh, so that your vote does count accurately to ask for an absentee ballot 
and when you vote via absentee ballot, you have a receipt showing how you voted. So I doubt they would be tallying those receipts. We are all very concerned about voter fraud, and I, I may put up one of those YouTube videos, maybe not today, but very soon, because this week get closer to the elections. And uh, so you might want to think about the, it. The flip side of that is that sometimes absentee ballots are conveniently lost. But the, the, the truth is that you do have a receipt that way that you don't have any other way. And, of course, somebody has to, would have to tally up those receipts in an honest manner, and that's a job that nobody's even begun. So um, I would say, yeah, that might be a nice thought, but it uh, may not accomplish that much in this particular election. Um, but if you, yeah, I would, I would take that over an electronic voting machine. If you have that in your area, D definitely don't go that route. Um, if you want to go with a paper punch ballot, um, uh, I, I would be reasonably comfortable with that compared to an absentee ballot that might be lost. You, you, there's no good Hanging choices. Chads. There's, there's no, you know, this is this is like a rigged game. It really is. Yeah. Well, do you have anything else? Well, just go in peace and think for yourself. <laughs>